Good evening, everybody. Um, before Guy and Alan say something, um, I thought it'd be quite amusing to... Um, well, it's a pretty weird uh, Saturday night. This is not kind of average Saturday night for us. This, uh, in the absence of um, someone here to induct our straights into the 2018 Hall of Fame, as a founder member, I felt uh, perhaps I might be the best qualified one to do this. It's a bit weird, but there we are, life's strange. Um, back in the 70s, the band's influences came from a number of sources. Elvis, Chuck Berry, Ry Cooder, JJ Kale, Bob Dylan, and many more. Like all musicians, Mark, myself, and David, we sat around playing, boring from here, there, and everywhere. Then something magical happens, and you develop your own style. Build up a following, and the whole thing starts to take on a shape and identity all of its own. I know there's been um, a lot of speculation about um, the fact that Mark's not here, but I can assure you it's just a personal thing. It's for personal reasons, okay. Let's just leave it at that. Here, it's more yeah, I've got, you've got to realise this is merely more about a group of people, more than one person. It's a collective, a brotherhood. And that's something that needs acknowledging tonight. Guy, Alan and myself are here to re represent the many musicians who have worked with Dire Straits over the years and made the band's success possible and led us all this way to Cleveland tonight. So, I know it's a little odd, but it is my honour to welcome Dire Straits into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And now I'd like to ask Guy Fletcher to say a few words. Thank you very much, John. Um, do you know, it occurred to me, I, I never thought of Dire Straits as a particularly cool band. But even though somebody today said to me that money for nothing was actually cool. Um, but then we weren't really there to be cool. We were there for the music. And when you've got a combination of things like the chemistry and the band and the songs that Mark brought to the table, it's kind of hard to get it wrong. Um, we have so many great songs and so much stuff to play with, we had such a great time. And I'm massively privileged to have been a part of it. Um, you know, a small wheel in a big machine, which um, has a few parts missing right now, but these things happen. Before I go on, I would like to thank everybody at the Hall of Fame who've um, been incredibly welcoming to us. I'd like to thank the town of Cleveland um, and its people. They have just been so warm and courteous and kind. Um, we've bumped into so many people. We've been around the town for the last couple of few days. We went to the museum today. What an incredible place. And everybody there was so nice. As soon as they heard our accents, they asked us why we were here and they kind of put two and two together. And it's just there's such a buzz here. And you should be very proud of that. Um, So not every day you get congratulated by a U.S. Customs Officer. <laughs> well, I did have to tell him why we're here. Why we were here. Um, I'm deeply honoured to have my name included in such illustrious company. Not only in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame across the road, but also in this room. And congratulations to all the other inductees this evening. Um, much deserved. touches the lives of so many and it's incredibly heartwarming to know that something you've been a part of has helped somebody even in the smallest way. Um, one, did, one other thing did occur to me the other day, when I was at high school, I think I was 15 years old, I was having an interview with the careers officer, careers master really, 
and he asked me what I wanted to do for a job when I left school. And naturally I said I wanted to be a musician. He laughed. He actually laughed out loud. And he hadn't even heard me play. Um, music just wasn't on the uh, agenda at school, let alone rock and roll music. Um, so for, for me, the idea of being on this stage holding this was not something I would have ever seriously believed would happen. But here we are. Things that seem out of reach aren't always as far off as you think. Um, just before I wrap up, I'd like to thank my family back home, in particular my mum and dad, who were both musicians, um, my, my brothers, comrade and Danny. But I would especially like to thank my wife, Laurie, who's sitting down here. Who, who, for some unimaginable reason, agreed to leave behind her life in America and come and live with me in sunny England <laughs> with a view to marriage and children which of course we did. And this year we celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary. Um, you've helped me in so many, so many ways. It's, well, blah, blah, you know, you've heard it all before. I love you. Um, also, I want to thank our two lovely, talented boys, Max and Leon, back home. We love and support. And finally, what this is really all about, the fans, you lot. The incredible people who have stuck with the band over the years, and in particular everyone who voted for our induction. I really think that you should consider this award yours. Um, but if you don't mind, I'll look after it for you. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. How cool is this? Eh? It's cool. You know, we musicians, we lead charmed lives. We love what we do, and what we do makes lots of people happy. And this band has made lots of people happy. So this award is for all the people we've made happy. Thanks, have a great night. Well, I must say, this is um, a long way from a small council flat. I think you call them social housing here in South London, where the original Dire Straits four-piece, Mark, David, myself and Pick, created its unique sound and style. 1976, we were living on homemade soup, beer and cigarettes. A lot of cigarettes. And like all bands starting out, we played where we could. Pubs, clubs, anywhere in fact that would have us. That's always difficult, where we had to compete with the punk explosion in London. Some of you might remember that. And several times we were met with confusion by an audience who was expecting something very different from a band with a name like Dire Straits, can you imagine? They thought we were a punk band. How could it be much further from the truth? In the very early days of a band, everyone needs a break, and ours came through a DJ as you realised on the footage there from a uh, DJ called Charlie Gillett at Radio London. Charlie was known, known for playing music put up by new bands. And Johnny Staines, who was an A&R man from Phonogram, was in the shower listening to Charlie's show on a Sunday morning when Songs of Swing came on the radio. He apparently leapt out of the shower, dripping wet, and called the radio station. The rest, as they say, is history. Unfortunately, Mark and I didn't hear this first play on the radio. We were busy making a few extra bucks moving furniture for a friend, would you believe? That's the old days. So we began an extraordinary journey, and there are quite a few people here, and who are not here, who I would like to thank, who played the big parts along the way. You probably know a few of them. Muff Winwood and Rhett Davis, 
Basic Street Studios for the first Dire Straits album. Barry Beckett and Jerry Wexler, Compass Point Studios for the second album. And I remember Jerry's infamous love of food, which some of you probably remember too, which meant that he, we never went, we'd never eaten so well. And there were regular visits to the airport with Jerry to pick up steaks and pastries from his favorite food stores flown in from New York fresh that day. Can you believe it? I think the food bill ended up being nearly as much as the studio bill. I love Jerry. And then the formidable team of Jerry, Jimmy Iovine and Shelley Yakis, who worked with us on making movies in the power station in New York. Neil Dorsman, who engineered Love Over Gold, and co-produced Bro uh, Brothers in Arms with Mark in Montserrat. It was a pleasure and a privilege working with all of them. Also, I want to pay a huge thanks to the abundance of fine musicians who have played with us and recorded with us over the years. 38 years, in fact. Hal Lindus, Roy Batan from the E Street Band, Tommy Mandel, Chris White, Phil Palmer, Paul Franklin, one of yours, Danny Cummins, Mel Collins, Chris Whitten, Sting, how could we forget Sting? <laughs> Terry Williams, Jake Beccaro, God rest him, Mike Manera, Michael and Randy Brecker, Jack Sony, and not forgetting Omar Hakim. Also, I want to thank the management team of Ed Bignall and Paul Cummins, who helped to guide us through this crazy world of being in a successful <coughs> rock and roll band. Ed, a great fan and friend of the late Peter Grant, was one of the best deal makes in the music business, as some of you probably remember. Paul Cummins, one of the best people to have on your side when recording and touring. It was a great team. And we're still talking to each other, would you believe? Not bad for management. Absolutely none of this would have happened, though, without one man who sadly is not here tonight, Mark Roffler. Not only a very generous man in himself, but a wonderfully unique guitar player, gifted songwriter, and who has written an abundance of classic songs that have a universal appeal, and I believe will stand the test of time. Romeo and Juliet, Songs of Swing, Bells in Arms, Telegraph Road, Private Investigations, Local Hero, Tundra of Love. So far away, the list goes on. Mark gave this band its unique style and made it stand out from the crowd. It was a pleasure to have gone the DS journey with him from those inauspicious beginnings. We are still close friends today, I'm pleased to say. So on both of our behalves, a big thank you to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for putting Dire Straits forward to be inducted. It is truly a great honor. And finally, and importantly, a huge thank you to the many fans who have followed us over the years and who came in very large numbers to see us play all over the world and have now inducted us into this unique and prestigious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We couldn't have done it without them or without you. Thank you.